Uh, my dad is, was from Georgia. My mother, a native of Fort Pierce, Florida. Um, I was educated, and oddly enough, I, I, I worked and managed Applebee's restaurants. My parents is from Georgia, and I relocated after my parents died. I came to live in Palm Beach County with my auntie, and then I moved to Broward County. I think I was around 11. Uh, my father's from Bade, Georgia. My mother was from a little small Swain, Georgia, somewhere in that area. We, we've been in Pompano uh, since uh, 1963, 62. We originated from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I'm from a place called Lyons, Georgia. I was born there. My parents are too. My mother came here in the 60s, late 60s, uh, and brought all of her children here. And uh, she was self-employed, and she worked very hard. So uh, she made sure that uh, we had a good life, all of us. Upon visiting my parents, uh, I saw that they had aged. I resigned and from Applebee's, and I moved back, moved back to Pompano in 2001 to take care of my parents. I live in the home I grew up in, and own the business that that we that my dad started and my mom started back in 1967. Cooking for people, being a neighbor, people in general that that knew how you cook and how your food tastes, and they will come and ask you to cook the food for them. Cooking for people in the community, and then I went into catering, and then when I went left catering, I went into flour. Uh, it was just something I liked doing, and I just did a lot of weddings and funerals and that type of thing. We, we've been in Pompano uh, since uh, 1963, 62. We originated from Cleveland, Ohio. We came here because of necessity. My mother was ill, her family was here, and so uh, we eventually followed my mother to Florida. And uh, also, over the years, we had visits months. I had Aunt Jiru here and Uncle Felton here. Well, we came here, um, I wound up going to Sanders Park Elementary. Uh, because of my family circumstances, uh, we were split up. I wound up staying with my, uh, my Aunt Frankie, my great Aunt Frankie, and my brother wound up staying with my uh, Uncle Felton. Uh, we found the experience a little different because Cleveland's education and language was a little different from, from South Florida, uh, as, as you may or may not know. Uh, we call sodas that they call now pops up north, and here they call them sodas. And so there's a disconnect in language when we originally got here, and folks wondering what we were talking about. My mother came here in the 60s, late 60s, uh, and brought all of her children here. And uh, she was self employed, and she worked very hard. So. Uh, she made sure that uh, we had a good life, all of us. I went to elementary school here, kindergarten, elementary, and high school. I graduated from Ely High School. And then I later went on to become a police officer. I started working for the city of Pompano in 1973. While all, all this time now, I was working at the police department, so I opened up a nail salon. So I wanted to hire uh, black girls, young girls, I grew up in Pompano. I'm a, a, a native uh, Floridian. It, it, Pompano has evolved. It's uh, more diverse, um, and in my opinion, it's a view of of America, and it's, it's for the good. Um, where, where we're at now, this this area used to be uh, Hammerville Road, which is now MLK Boulevard, used to be a rock road. I was young. I, it was about, um, during that time, I was probably seven or eight or nine. I would ride up, up this way with my dad. I always, uh, I was always with my dad and, and we would come downtown, which is, the, which is what this area was designated as, uh, downtown Pompano. I'm now 61, so I've, I've seen a lot of changes since I've been running the shop, running the family business from 2001 to current. 
So there's been a lot of changes uh, and positive changes, good changes. This thing is different than it was. It has grown quite a lot. At that time, we didn't have all the highways and you just had Dixie Highway more or less and maybe Federal Highway, but everything else has grown up around it now. Everybody call me mama. White, black, Puerto Rican, any, any nationality, they call me mama. Everybody respected me and everybody, you know, it was a, I don't know about you, but most of the people hugged and kissed. They hugged and kissed. Whether we was white, they were white, I know they always hugged and kissed you and, and got some positive to say about you, you know? And that carried you on and that was the strength of everything. The young people to know how to dress and know how to talk and know what to expect out of coming to church and being a church member. You sort of grope them, catch them by the waist and carry them on. Even the boys, you, you taught them how to do in church and what to do, how to be like in church. And you can't, now you can't get young people in church and sit them aside and say, you know, honey, you should dress like this. Or you should dress like that. You can't do that anymore. They're not having it. They won't have that now. Uh, in Cleveland, um, it was always cold. Uh, we did enjoy the, the icicles. Uh, we had a lot more um, freedom. We used to jump off roofs. We were kids. We were adventurous. Uh, going to people's yards, getting cherries and uh, and there really were cherries uh, in, in, in Cleveland. Um, but when we came to South Florida, because of the difference in the environment, uh, we wound up uh, finding out about the farm life. Uh, farm life was, was not really an easy life, but it was an adventurous life. We picked beans, bell peppers. Uh, oftentimes, those, those are sometimes the things that help pay bills. We didn't make a lot of money because we weren't that fast, but at least we learned to do that. Uh, it brought the family together. Uh, there was always love, but there was a common common goal that we had to do it in order sometimes to eat. Um, uh, sometimes it just kept us busy and out of trouble. Um, coming to South Florida was, was different. Uh, eventually, um, we found other things to do. We, we kind of grew up. I started playing basketball. My brother started running track. Uh, we got more involved in the integral part of Blanche Ely High School, uh, which was in itself um, turned out to be a very good thing. We, we got a good foundation from that. Well, it's interesting. Uh, my parents, even in Cleveland, they would always send us to church. Sometimes they wouldn't go. But we always went to church, and then my Aunt Frankie, she, she took us starts. We started going to Mount Calvary Baptist Church. And oftentimes, as kids, you really don't get the dynamics of the spiritual or the faith experience until you're in trouble or until there's a great need. And my great need came when I went to a Bethune-Cookman College. I had a C average, and I didn't think that I was going to be able to um, accomplish or get through the college life. I remember laying in bed one night and said, Lord, if you let me get through this, help me. I'll spend at least three years of my life trying to give back to others. Well, God must have heard me because I left Bethune-Cookman with a 3.67. And, uh, but for some reason, he didn't hit it three years. It seems like for the rest of my life, I've been participating in uh, serving others. Uh, what has changed, um, I think, is the improvement of the community. I like the fact that we are upgrading everything and bringing in the young people. I was president of the NAACP also for North Broward County for a number of years. I had a good team. Even Ed Phillips was uh, my political chairperson. Church was a place where everybody gathered and where we socialized and, uh, and everything. So the church was one of the most important places. That's where we, our parents went and the family mostly went. And our parents mostly encouraged us to go to Bible study and everything. So that was a good foundation for my family. doing to others, doing to others as you would have them doing to you, uh, treating people fairly, honesty, and, and just being your best and doing your best. I, I'm a Christian and we practice uh, Christianity and attending church. 
my mantra, our mantra as a family, uh, to treat people the way you want to be treated. I was brought up to believe that God helped those who help themselves. So I think um, community involvement, uh, communicating to the community at large, and accessibility. Um, there are people that I know, a few people, that that need services by that the city does provide and they're unaware of, of the services that the city provide that they need. Well, for, for one thing, it wouldn't be a lot of these tall buildings in which way, these buildings there, which way you came. This one right there on that land look like it's gonna fall right over on the road. Look like it's gonna fall right over that thing right down there, it's gonna fall right over the road. And I don't think we would have so many homeless people on the road, you know what I'm saying? Because people will be more acceptable at to what is going on. Say like me, if I saw somebody hungry, I would feed them. You wouldn't have all of this going on like it is, like, you know? I don't think so, maybe you would, but I don't think so. Well, what I, what I hope for Pompano in the future is uh, the promise of America, and that is the spirit of inclusion. And oftentimes it's interpreted differently by an awful lot of people in terms of what inclusion means. Sometimes we have selective amnesia as to what that means. And there are people like me, uh, based on how I grew up, who understand that in order to have inclusion, you have to be able to talk to folks to be included. You can't, um, you can't swing an ax from a distance. Sometimes you have to use the act of language, the, the act of um, purpose, the act of uh, intelligence, and, and not necessarily anger. I found that that works better. Uh, what I like to see um, for my family is that uh, we somehow have uh, and will be a part of uh, shaping how things are to come in, in, in this city. Uh, when I talk about the spirit of inclusion, I talk about quality education, quality job opportunities, because it is a travesty to have so many buildings and so much development going in the area and relatively few folks who live here have an opportunity to participate. Those are the kind of things that stand out to me. And because I know better, I participate to see if I can make it better. I do a lot of seniors here at my beauty salon. And, uh, and they all come to me for answers because they think that I have the answer to everything. But I don't. But I try to find out and I'm not afraid to ask. So I've been going before the commission here in Pompano asking for that. And I think it's gonna come to pass. So I'm praying and hoping that it will because before, I'm 68, so before I die, I want seniors, the real poor ones, to have a nice place to live because a lot of them gave up their homes for their children who were in trouble and uh, lost them. And you know, like bonding them out of jail and so on and so forth and, and took advantage of them. And a lot of my seniors are living with their children and they don't want that. They want their own house. I want, and I've been, you know, asking for senior housing, affordable senior housing. Whereas the seniors who are uh, above 60 and, uh, and up, who have incomes are only $700. So what I've been fighting for, and if you notice the area, it's improved because it's brought in uh, subsidized housing. But the 55 and above here in Pompano would take anybody, but the people that I serve and the people who come to me to complain are seniors who are above 55, way above 55. The ones who uh, social security check is only $700. So I've been trying to get the city to actually build that kind of housing, housing where they can afford it, 62 and above. So the housing authority now, I think it's gonna do that. 